it's a beautiful sunny day. Sun came out to play. It's been raining for the last few days. It's Jason with JW Classic VW. Guys, welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the 40 horsepower build. Getting right into some good stuff. And you guys had a little bit of a intro there. Talking about a few of those things. She's all back together again. We got the 40 thou shims installed. Everything is torqued down, sealed back up. Push rod tube sealed up. Seams facing up. Yes, guys. They are. They're facing up. And I got my deflector tin installed because I know you are going to ask that question on both sides. Very cool. Very cool. Oil pump. You saw that in the intro. All installed, sealed up. And I put some Vaseline in here. Pack some Vaseline in there because it helps out with the initial start and priming that pump so that you don't have like a dry pump situation or a hard time getting that thing to start circulating some of that oil. I'm sure that some of you old timers out there know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, and a different type of stand here. We are doing a generator delete. We're getting rid of the generator. Well, not really a delete, I guess. And installing an alternator. And let me show you guys that. To show you the 40 horsepower build. Ooh, yeah. Went ahead and did a alternator conversion from the old school generator i thought about keeping that generator for a little bit but uh, then i changed my mind today we're going to be talking about the base settings on your carburetor and yeah just got to do something a little different when it comes to the tins here so help me out guys again here we go <laughs> just a little bit different looking guys huh still a little bit of refresh paint job got some nice black satin paint on here let me show you which one i went ahead and picked up Got these new cans right here. This uh, special changer spray pattern, I guess. But uh, Rust Oleum is a go to for me, always has been. But yeah, all set up. I can still kind of see the goose outline here, so I might uh, trace that at some point. But all the plug wires are installed, the uh, coil, the generator. Got the belt tight to where I want it to be. All kinds of good stuff going on. Did the manifold. You guys saw that too, and I'll put it up over here. A little video real quick. Cool, we are really close to getting her fired up. Yeah, our exhaust is installed as well. Getting her fired up and ready to rock and roll. There is one thing though, when you install these generators, oh, not generators, install these alternators versus the uh, generators, is you lose some room, some real estate here. So there's a little spacer, like a one inch spacer that you install on the manifold to raise up the 34 pick three or, the, or your carburetor so that it doesn't touch or rub the side here. The carburetor, this area back here hits the uh, alternator, and that's no bueno. But uh, now it's time to get into some of these base settings on how you configure this thing. This is a China Repop, so uh, yeah, not preferred, but I just picked one up real quick because my old carburetor had, had bit the dust. So we're gonna adjust the bypass, the big one's the bypass, and then you have the volume, which is like the fuel volume, the little one down below. And then your uh, fast idle screw, which is not for idle. And then your choke, of course. So your choke should just be barely opened up without uh, any pressure on here. Choke just barely opened up. And you do that by loosening the screws on the side here. And you can turn your choke. There's a spring inside there to adjust the tension that you have. And you want to just barely open. I think it's like 3 thou. Just like the bottom butterfly, it's supposed to be like about three thou, so that it allows the correct amount of air to go by those uh, little orifices down there at the base. Cool. So base settings on the screws, and then we'll be about done for today, guys. Yeah, short video. The next video we're going to be doing the actual will it run, will it start on the forty horsepower build. Let's go ahead and adjust that carburetor. So real quick uh, reference points, the uh, links to these references will be in the description below. Robin Dave's air cool page is a, is a go-to for me. I use them all the time, and uh, th their settings are 
primarily for once you get the car warmed up for the 34 pick three. I guess we'll see. It works for a couple other carburetors too. Let's see. And this is from Heritage, their website. This is just the the base settings on the MP30 pick three, which is basically what we got here. Okay, that's what I keep seeing. 34 pick three. Blah blah blah. All right, guys, we'll get you up in the tripod and let's do some settings. And this is your fast idle screw, bypass, and then your volume control. And then the choke is on the other side. So the choke at the fully open position, which it is right now, you want to be able to take a 3 thou feeler gauge and just kind of be able to drag it through there, which it already is. So fast idle is base setting is good to go. For the bypass and for the volume control, you want to be careful with these because if you tighten them down too tight, you just want to barely have it seating. If you tighten it down too tight, you could jack up the seat on the inside, and that'd be a bad deal. So it's two and a half on the bypass from bottom. So there's half, one, half, two, and then half. So two and a half off the bottom. Your uh, volume control is the same, so two and a half off the bottom. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit so you can see that. All right, you guys can make it out. So two and a half off the bottom. This is just your initial setting. So half one, half two, two and a half. So 34 pick 3, 30 pick 3, these uh, two adjustment screws on the sides for any of you guys doing an initial setup before your first start, your first run, your first heat cycle before you get to everything rocking and rolling and uh, do your running or idle adjustments, these are your base settings for your carburetor. Something else that's really good valid information is when you do the installation of the you know, conversion from the generator to the alternator, you're gonna have to change out the stand. It's a different type of stand that holds this thing. And with that, you have to remove this SOB inside of there. That piece, pain in the butt. Let me show you something over the bench real quick. So as you can see, the struggle was real, real pain in the butt. This little tool for removing the sucker is just about pointless. Installing it, yeah, it actually works great, but for removing it, it's a pain in the butt. So I picked up uh, one of these inside pipe wrenches. This one inch one is gets the job done. Now, I wasn't able to insert this with the tool the way you're supposed to, because it's got like an offset to where this will kind of turn as you're turning it out. I just had to pound it, <laughs> pound it down inside of there, but it worked to remove it, so that's all that mattered. Yeah, some else good information for you guys. I'll put this tool down in the description below, along with all the information on the resources that I used for uh, today. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. So, a quick, easy video today. The next video is going to be the uh, Will of Run. Ooh, will a 40 horsepower run. Hi, Goose. Talk to you guys soon. Talk to you in the next one. Hope you have a great weekend. This is going to have a video that's probably coming out tomorrow, so it is Saturday. So, I hope you're having a great weekend. Get out in the garage, do some work. Uh, knock a little bit of stuff out, guys. Soon. We got one more video, the 40 horsepower build. I might put out a like a compilation of like all the videos together, just time lapse for you guys. But uh, after that, we got some some other things to do with Goose. See you guys in the next video. This is Jason with Jaded Class of VW, and I'm out.